Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to solve a few uh, trigonometric problems related to geometry. Um, basically, a continuation of the topic. Um, obviously, as usually, I do recommend you to try to solve these problems yourself first, because that's the whole purpose. So you will be actually solving the problems, and only then um, uh, listen to this lecture. So if you didn't do it yet, just press the pause button and uh, and uh, try to engage yourself into um, thinking about these problems. Um, so um, okay, so let's not do anything and let's go straight to the problems. Okay, problem number one. If you have a triangle. Uh, vertices are ABC, angles are alpha, beta, gamma, and three a, uh, and three altitudes. Uh, the altitudes are HA because it falls on the side A, um, which is this one. This is B opposite to the vertex B, and this is HB, and this is HC falls to the side C. So, um, any triangle, and I would like to prove the following property. HA times sine of alpha equals HB sine beta equals HC sine gamma. Well, all problems uh, today will be relatively simple. Now, looking at that, um, I don't know, it, it reminds me immediately the, the law of science. So something should be related to the law of science. Now, what is the law of science? It's A over sine alpha equals B over sine beta equals C over sine gamma, right? At the same time, we know that A times the altitude, which is uh, falling to A, it's the same as B, H, B, the same as C, H, C. This is double area of the triangle, right? The base times altitude divided by 2 or the base times altitude divided by 2, or this base times altitude divided by 2. So all these are areas. So uh, side times um, the altitude towards this side is double area. Now, from these two, I can ver very easily derive this one. How? Well, uh, for instance, HA equals 2S divided by A. HB is equal to 2S divided by B, and HC is equal to 2S divided by C. And if I will substitute in this, I will have exactly the law of sines with the multiplier S everywhere, right? So I will have... So since HA is 2S, S divided by A, I have this, right? Now this is 2S over A sine B, and this is 2S uh, over B sine gamma. Now, these are equal, right? Because S is just a multiplier everywhere, and this is the revert uh, re 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 reverted or reversed, but they're invert, inverted law of science. So law of science is A divided by sine of alpha equals to, oh, um, this is B, I'm sorry, and this is C. Um, so this is inverted law of science, basically, because law of science is a divided by sine of uh, alpha, b divided by sine of beta, 
and c divided by sine of, uh, gamma, and this is just inverted. So if these are equal, then inverted are equal as well. So this is basically the proof. We start from the law of sines. We can invert it, multiply by 2s, and we got this one. So everything is like in reversible in, bo in both the, the directions. OK, that's it for number one. Number two. Given a parallelogram, with acute angle alpha. We have to prove that 4 times AB times AD times cosine alpha equals to AC square minus BB square. Now, AC square is a diagonal, BD is another diagonal. So the difference of squares of diagonals, the bigger minus smaller, it's 4 times AB times AD and cosine. Well, whenever you see something like product of two sides and the cosine between them, of the angle between them, that actually reminds the law of cosines, right? Now, what is the law of cosines? Uh, applicable to triangle ABD, law of cosines is, well, let me just call this thing, I will call, let's say, uh, P, this thing I will call Q, just to make it easier, right? So AB is P and this is Q. Alright? This is X and this is Y. X, Y. So from the triangle ABG, Y square equals P square plus Q square minus 2PQ cosine alpha, right? That's the law of cosines. Now, from triangle ABC, x squared equals p squared. Now, this is parallelogram, which means this is also q, right? So, p squared plus q squared minus 2pq cosine and what is this angle? Well, this angle um, is pi minus alpha, right? 180 degree minus alpha. So this is pi, uh, pi minus alpha. Now, by the way, cosine of pi minus alpha equals to what? Cosine is abscissa, right? So, if this is the unit circle, this is alpha, this is pi minus alpha. This is the same by absolute value, but with a minus sign. So it's minus cosine alpha. So that's why this is equal to p squared plus q squared plus 2pq cosine of alpha, right? Now, what is AC squared minus BD squared, X squared minus uh, Y squared? If I will subtract from this this, P squared will be reduced, Q squared will be reduced. This is plus 2PQ uh, cosine, and this is minus, but I'm subtracting, so it will be plus. So it will be 2PQ cosine minus minus 2pq, which is 4pq cosine of alpha. That's exactly what this is. Mm. 
that's it. Very simple problem. By the way, for the previous two cases, two previous uh, problems, the first one contained signs and it kind of implied that the law of signs should be applicable, and the second one contains the product of two sides uh, by the cosine uh, of the angle between them, and again, this prompts for law of cosines, and, and indeed, in both cases, these two theorems did help. Uh, okay, now, let's say you have any triangle so this is A, this is B and this is angle bisector so these two angles are the same uh, and each one is equal to gamma over 2 right? Since it's a bisector, this is angle gamma, and this is LC, right? The bisector. Now, we have to prove that LC times A plus B equals 2AB cosine gamma over 2. So, bisector times sum of the sides uh, in between them, uh, this bisector actually goes, is equal to 2AB and cosine. All right. Now, um, actually, I'm sure there are more than one way to, to, to prove this particular um, equality. Um, the one which I have chosen is, let's just uh, have these two perpendiculars as altitudes of triangles ADC and BDC. And what I will do is, I will compare some of the areas of these two triangles with the area of an entire triangle. Now, what is the area of ADC in terms of the base and an altitude? Well, the base is B. Altitude from this triangle DCM. It's a right triangle. Hypotenuse is LC. The acute angle is gamma over 2, so I know the dm, the altitude, uh, in, in this triangle. And it's a cadetus in the right triangle dmc. It's equal to hypotenuse times sine of gamma over 2. So my area of triangle ACD uh, equals ACD equals B times altitude, which is LC times sine of gamma over 2, and divided by 2, right? Now, area of triangle BCD equals, again, one half of the base, which is A, times LC times DN is exactly the same. It's also LC times sine of gamma over 2. On the other hand, the area of triangle ABC, the entire triangle, is, let's think, well, if I will take this particular altitude, so it would be B, one half B, and and this particular edge altitude is A times sine of the gamma, right? From the triangle 
BPC. BP is the catheters. BC is hypotenuse, uh, length of A, and the angle is gamma, so the opposite catheters. Now, sum of these two is equal to this, right? Well, therefore, um, well, let's just forget about one half. Uh, if I will sum these two, I will get LC times A plus B sine of gamma over 2, right? If I will sum these two, and I'll drop one half because it's uh, reduced, uh, it, it will be reduced anyway. And on the, uh, on the right side, I have this. Well, we are close to this one, but just need a little bit more. Now, obviously, sine of gamma, it's uh, 2 of gamma over 2, right? So it's gamma over 2 plus gamma over 2, double gamma over 2. So it's 2ab sine gamma over 2 and cosine gamma over 2, right? That's what sine of gamma is. It's 2 sine gamma over 2, cosine gamma over 2. I still remember the formula for the sine and the cosine of the sum of two angles, right? So this is gamma over 2 plus gamma over 2. That's what it is. And from here, obviously, we can reduce by sine of gamma over 2. And we get exactly this. That's it. Now, what was interesting about this particular problem? I was using um, additional construction. I put all the altitudes and uh, the concept of area. Um, I don't know what exactly prompted me to do this. However, um, we do have to include this bisector, LC, into some kind of a equality, right, from which we can derive the equality which we need. And, you know, sum of two areas of the small triangle is equal to, to, to the area of the big triangle is really an equality. And I'm sure there are some other components of this uh, triangle which can be connected together with some kind of an equation. Uh, well, again, the problem can have many different solutions. This is just one of them, and it seems to me is relatively simple because all I need to know is that the, the catheters is equal to hypotenuse times the sine of the angle or something. All right. Next. Um, next, we have an isosceles triangle. A, B, C, and we have altitudes, one altitude, another altitude, and another altitude. So these are right angles. Now, this angle is given. Let's call it gamma. So gamma is given. Now, what I have to find out is now H is the intersection of these three altitudes. It's called orthocenter, by the way, of the triangle. I have to find out in what ratio point H divides uh, the uh, altitude from C to F. So basically I have to uh, find out the ratio of HF divided by CH.
Okay? Now, it's actually quite easy. Um, first of all, this is a socialist triangle, right? So this altitude is everything. <laughs> it's altitude, it's uh, angle bisector, it's median uh, of this side, and it's basically the axis of symmetry, right? The whole picture is completely symmetrical because this is perpendicular, so and CD is equal to DB, so point C and point B are symmetrical relatively to this one, so everything is symmetrical. Um, so it's very easy to, 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 to prove, for instance, that EH and HF are exactly the same. Well, why? Well, for instance, you can consider right triangles uh, AEH and AFH, they have the common hypotenuse, and the angles are the same because the altitude is a bisector as an angle bisector as well, right? So, everything is symmetrical. But now, let's think about it. Angle E H C. Consider angle E H C. Well, this line is perpendicular to this. This line is perpendicular to this. So basically, this angle is the same as this angle, right? Because it's two angles which are formed uh, uh, by, by mutually perpendicular uh, lines. Now, from this, we can... Uh, obviously, it's, and this is equal to, well, this is alpha, so this is alpha. So, from this we can see that angle uh, ECH ECH, right? Is equal, basically, pi over 2 minus alpha, because triangle CH uh, E is the right triangle. Now, I just mentioned that EH is equal to HF. This is equal to this, because these triangles are congruent, right? So basically, if you consider right now triangle ECH, it's the right triangle. The angle alpha is something which we definitely know. So what is the ratio of HF to CH? It's the same as EH to CH, right? And this is, by definition, a cosine of alpha, right? That's basically... Uh, that's basically... EH over CH, which is the same as HF over CH. So this is what we actually need. The fact that this angle is perpendicular this and this, so this angle is equal to this one. That's sufficient to basically say that the ratio between um, segments uh, in, into which point H divides this altitude is the same as cosine of alpha. So as long as one of the angles is given to us, um, if, this, if, if this angle is given, then we can obviously calculate what this one is, because the, this is a, a, an isosceles triangle. So as soon as we know one of the angles of the isosceles uh, triangle, we know this angle on the top, and the cosine of this angle on the top is the ratio which we need. 
Well, that's it. Next. Given a rhombus. Now, this is point M, and it's chosen in such a way that area of triangle ADM, this triangle, is equal to one third of the area of an entire parallelogram ABCD. Now, what's also known is that the cosine of alpha is equal to one fourth. What we have to prove is that AM divided by DM equals 2. This would have to be proven. So knowing that the area of this triangle is one-third of the area of an entire parallelogram, and knowing that the cosine of this angle is about fourths, we have to prove that the AM is twice as big as, as DM. Okay? All right. So, um, what, what I'm going to do is, I will put some abbreviations. Let's say this is A, this is X, this is Y. All right? Now, what I will also do, since we are dealing with uh, areas, I will need um, altitudes. So this is one altitude, uh, M, uh, P, and this is another altitude, B, Q. Let's say this is equal to U and this is equal to V. Right? So M, P equals to U and B, Q equals to B. All right, now let's do the calculation of the areas, right? Now, the area of the parallelogram is base, which is A, times height, which is V. So here I have A times V. Or, if you wish, this is a rhombus, right? So all sides are A. And knowing the cosine of this angle, um, I can very easily find the uh, altitude BQ, right? That's A times uh, sine of alpha. But let's just leave it for, for, for later. Now, the area of a triangle is equal to base, which is also A, times um, altitude. So, this is equal to A times U. But it's a triangle, so we have to divide it by 2, right? Let me wipe out this. It doesn't really bother us. And we know this. 
Now, this is angle alpha and this is angle alpha. Right? Because this is a rhombus, which is therefore parallelogram, so these are parallel. Now, knowing x, I can calculate the uh, altitude here as well. So, this particular equation would look like this. A times, instead of u, I will put x sine alpha. X sine alpha divided by 2, right? And on the right, I have one third A times, and instead of V, I will put A times sine alpha. So, from here, I immediately see that x is equal to two-thirds of a. That's interesting, right? Such a complicated calculations and the conditions related to area, etc., etc., and it looks like x is equal to two-thirds of a even without the angle alpha. It's independent. So for any angle alpha, that would be the case. So if I draw the line, which cuts off the triangle, which area is one-third of the area of the rhombus, then this particular piece would be two-thirds of the side. All right, but we don't need really this. We need the ratio between AM and MD, right? So, in this case, since I already know this X, I can find out AM, which is Y, using the law of cosines, right? So law of cosines says that y squared is equal to a squared plus x squared minus 2ax and the cosine. Now what is this angle? This angle is pi minus alpha, right? Or a squared plus x squared is 4 ninths of a squared minus 2a, x is 2 thirds of a, so I put square here. Now, the cosine of pi minus alpha, we already spoken uh, during this lecture, it's negative cosine of alpha, so I'll put this plus and cosine of alpha. But, luckily, we know what is the cosine of alpha. It's one quarter, right? So, this would be a squared plus 4 ninths a squared plus. This is 1 quarter. This is 2 times 2, which is 4. So, it will be reduced. So, I have a squared divided by 3. is equal to two-thirds of a, that's what we have found. And this is what? The common denominator is 9, so this is 9, plus 4, 13, plus 3, which is 16, so it's equal to 16 ninths a squared. from which y is equal to 4 thirds of a. Now, look at this, and look at this. Obviously, y divided by x is equal to 2, and that's exactly what's necessary to prove. All right? This wasn't actually too difficult to uh, to come up with the solution because again we were dealing with areas and 
basically all I did was use the definition of the area um, and uh, you know the formulas for uh, rhombus or parallelogram and, and the triangle so that, that, that wasn't really difficult to prove. Now, um, the last problem, well, in notes uh, on unizor.com, I'm, I'm using triangle in this case, um, which has an inscribed circle. But uh, actually, I would like to, um, in, the in this lecture, I would like to address a little bit more general case. What if you have an inscribed a circle into any uh, convex polygon. Now, how to express the area of polygon in terms of radius of inscribed circle, this one, and angles. So let's say we have all angles and the radius. Well, that's actually sufficient to, um, uh, to calculate the area. Now, how do we do it? Well, obviously, since it's inscribed um, circle, these are all perpendiculars to sides, right? These are all perpendicular to sides. Now, if you will connect the center with vertices, you basically subdivide the area of the entire polygon into many triangles. Now, what do we know about each triangle? About each triangle? Well, let's consider, for instance, O, A, B, C, D, E, uh, M, N, P, sorry, P, U, R. Let's say, what do we know about triangle uh, A, O, M, for instance? Triangle A, O, M. Now, what's the area of this triangle? Well, it's, uh, the, it's the right triangle, right? We know one catheter, which is R, right? And we know this angle, which is basically alpha divided by 2. Therefore, we know another, we can calculate another uh, catheter, and the area would be equal to 1 half R, and this one, uh, since AM divided by OM is cotangent of this angle, AM would be equal to uh, this catheter, which is R, times cotangent. So R squared and cotangent of alpha over 2, right? R times R by cotangent. Since AM divided by R is equal to cotangent of alpha over 2. AM is equal to R times cotangent. That's fine. That's right. So that's the formula for area of AOM. Now, for triangle uh, EOM, EOM, this one, it's symmetrical. It's exactly the same thing, the same triangle, right? Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, not EOM. NOM. NOA. This one. This one. Because these are equal uh, 
tangential lines. We have proven this many times before. So area of uh, ANO and AMO are exactly the same because these triangles are uh, congruent. Both are right triangle, common hypotenuse, and these two uh, pieces of tangential lines are the same. Um, this is R as well. So these two triangles are equal, and that's why the area is equal to exactly the same cotangent of alpha over 2. So, therefore, the area of A and O M, sum of these, it's some kind of a quadrilateral. A and O M is equal to R squared cotangent of alpha over 2. Now, absolutely similarly, the area of quadrilateral, the next one, B, P, O, N, this one. It's the sum of these two triangles. Again, triangles are exactly the same because uh, they have the common hypotenuse, and these two catheters, uh, these two catheters are, are radiuses, so they are equal. So these catheters, uh, these this catheter uh, is equal to this catheter. So everything is the same, congruent triangles, and the area is r square cotangent of. In this case, if this angle is beta, it would be beta over two. And I can continue this thing for all these uh, quadrilaterals. This one, this one, and this one. So basically what I have is the total area, if I summarize all of them together, would be equal to r square times sum of cotangents. Cotangents of alpha over 2 plus cotangents of beta over 2 plus etc. All angles are supposed to be taken care of. So if I know the angles and I know the, the radius of the inscribed circle, I can calculate the area of the entire um, uh, convex polygon into which this circle is inscribed using something like this. Now, obviously, the very last angle I don't have to um, uh, use, I don't have to know, basically, the value of the last angle, because I know that the sum of angles of any um, convex polygon can be expressed as, basically, the number of sides and, uh, and all the previous angles. So, now, so sum of all the angles is dependent on, on the number of sides, actually. So if I know how many sides this, this, uh, uh, this polygon has, then I, I, I know the sum of the angles, and that's why I don't need the last one. I can calculate it based on the previous ones and the number of sides. But that's, that's besides the point, basically. So knowing angles and the radius of an inscribed circle, if there is an inscribed circle, because not into every um, convex polygon you can inscribe the circle. So uh, if there is such a circle, then its radius and the angles are sufficient to calculate the, the area. Now, obviously, in case of a triangle, it would be only three angles, and the third one is pi minus sum of the previous one, so you can just basically replace the cotangent of gamma with the cotangent of uh, some expression based on alpha and beta. Um, well, that's it. These are all the problems I wanted to present today. I do recommend you to go through these problems again and solve them accurately. I do suggest in writing, actually. I mean, if you accurately write your solution um, on the paper, 
uh, or in the computer, basically, and try to be as specific as possible. That's very, very useful exercise. So no statement is, is, is left without uh, some kind of a reasoning behind it. So every step should be um, based on some, some logical reasoning. Um, so I do recommend you to go through these problems again and solve them again. Um, and uh, well, don't forget that Unizor uh, has a lot of other things. And if you um, sign in as, as as a student, you not only can just um, go yourself through all these lectures and problems, etc. It will also present you exams, and it will uh, give you some score. Um, an exam you can take any time you want and as many times as you want to improve your score. The goal is for every exam to get the maximum score. That, that's what's very important. Uh, try, to, try to think about this. Um, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.